this video we're going to be looking at two different ways to use a super base vault to keep our API key secure in our Flutterflow apps. Okay so whether we are connecting to our external APIs via Flutterflow directly or we are doing it via the Superbase HTTP extension Obviously, one of the big things we need to do is keep our API key secure. So the way we're going to do it here, uh, in this particular example you see here, I've got a schema called private keys, um, which is a way of doing it. So you can control the role access to the to the key in the schema. But the best way of doing it is actually the Superbase Vault, which is here in the settings and in Vault. So basically your key is stored and encrypted with, it, with an encryption key. So it's safe and secure and then you can retrieve it and use it as, as you need to. So you're not storing it publicly, you're not storing it in a variable, it's not in the schema that's available to public, you have to use security defined functions to enter this. So um, the problem with using API calls directly in Flutterflow is, and I did a video on API calls a couple of weeks ago, because it does work really well. It's actually very straightforward and nice and uh, nice and intuitive. But the problem is, unless you're using Firebase, um, this function here doesn't work. So what this does, so if you toggle the switch there, what will happen is it will connect to the API from a Google Cloud function so it's not being done from within your application. Now don't need necessarily to put your key in the headers there. You can see I've got it there as a variable which we're importing into the uh, into the API call there but if you're not using Google Cloud functions you're not keeping your secret secure so therefore you either got to hard code it into into the headers or you've got to store it in an app state probably um, which somebody could decompile your app if it's mobile native and get your API keys that's one way around it there's a few ways if you look online there's different ways people can get your API keys unless you've got them secretly secured so Two ways of doing this. Um, one is not so ideal, but does work. And the other one is my preference. Um, the way I do it, I'd say I don't use, I don't particularly use this functionality at all. I do everything from Superbase, as I've said probably a few times in the videos. So what we can do, we can create a custom action that go and fetches our API key from the Superbase Vault and imports it into the API call here before we make the API call. And by doing that, we call a remote procedure call called read secret. And basically, all we're doing our response is our string, which we don't need to pass any arguments in. All we're doing is saying, please go and read my secret and bring it back to Flutterflow, and it passes it back as a string. So what we do then, we'll, our custom action, we haven't got this set up anywhere, but if we just go and and our subscribe button that we did a, um, a few weeks ago, just go and stick it there. So um, if we just add an action in anywhere, just for now, just to so that you have a custom action and it will be get your OpenAI key and your action output would be API key and then we'd have another one which would make an API call which would be the open AI and the variable we're passing in there's the prompt obviously which is the key which would be our custom action Where have we gone? There we go. Action output. There. So, what would I, so in that scenario, there obviously they've just stuck those in the middle of 
another action but it's the same thing what, what will happen is call your custom action to get your API key pass your IK API key into your into your backend call as a variable so if you delete those because obviously don't particularly want those there and then that would then be passed into the authorization as the bearer and that'd be a API key that works I've done that there is a drawback however of this particular method if you're building a web app and you go into network and you'll have a list of actions down here and if you click on one and go into the payload you can read the API key so it's something that you've got to be wary of basically that inadvertently exposing it if you're pulling it in from Flutterflow so if you're pulling it into Flutterflow and then using it that's fine but you've got to be wary that certainly on a web app you can go and read that in the payload of the uh, network tab on a native app obviously it's going to be more difficult because it's going to be in and straight out again and there is no functionality to do that although I'm sure somebody who really wanted to get hold of your API key would be able to so with, with that being said if you want to use this method um, the code as always will be available to download uh, with a link down below but we're calling read secret and obviously we're returning the string so if we go over to superbase right so this is the superbase function we are calling and as it's security final we'll set a search path which keeps it secure they always sort of recommend that you keep basically the scheme you trust scheme you want to use with the pg temple was last so it shouldn't get far that far that's a security that's a security issue that just covers that off um and essentially what we're doing is we are getting the decrypted secret from our vault where the name is OpenAI secret so if I go into my vault and what I'm showing you here is that's the encrypted key they're the actual keys themselves and I've got one there called OpenAI secret and what we're doing we are pulling the decrypted secret ie this value into that function and then we're returning the secret which from our Flutterflow end is our response which is our string which we've just used in those couple of actions I've just demonstrated so if you want to do it in Flutterflow that is how you do it not my personal preference but you know you are you obviously can do whatever whatever you uh, you you prefer now to use this in Superbase so what we're doing this particular function we are just retrieving basically our secret from the vault we've added a couple of extra layers in here which I'll explain in a second and then from there we are um, calling another function which actually the one that calls the OpenAI API so and that is this one so basically what we've done we are using the postgre http extension same we've done on a few of these uh, a few of these videos now and we're passing in our description which is what we're telling the ai model to create and then the important bit for this particular demonstration our secret and basically we pass the secret in there which is our api key which we send into which we are sending to OpenAI and returning our image. So let's go back to the secret. Okay, so what we're doing, we're passing the user's UUID. So in Flutterflow, we've got a custom action, we're passing in user's ID and we're passing in the description for the um, image that we want to create although in, in this instance that's obviously not relevant so what we're doing is passing users id and what we're doing with users id we are going into the auth table and checking if that particular user is an authenticated user which they should be they've got a user user id but it's just a sort of a layer of a check i guess just to, to make sure that's the case 
and then we're doing what we did previously we're selecting the cryptic secret from the vault which is the open eye secret and we are passing that secret into our create image function there so in this example what we're doing we are the description just literally gets brought into this one and then passed through there to create the image the reason i did this i wanted to keep it separate from i wanted to basically this is the function that gets the secret and then we want to, i want to do a second function to actually make the api call just to keep it tidy it, it was just my personal preference you can do it within if you go back to the um, sms one that i had up earlier this is done by the private keys um, schema however all you do is replace the private skis functionality in this particular thing with the calling it from the from the vault which is actually a much better way of doing it and i uh, i think i had some comments at the time and i and i completely agree with them uh, it was just the way i chose to do that particular one um so yeah so that's that's it really so all this function does here is actually gets the secret and then passes the description straight through into the http call so that's it really it's really not that complicated to use and it is the best way of keeping your secrets secure in superbase because when you make an http request from your flutterflow app via an arpc call so if we go back to our network tab and if we're making a remote procedure call and um, our remote procedure call is not returning the secret to flutterflow the issue of having been able to see it in the payload obviously doesn't exist so in the second example there where we've done it with postgres http in superbase the only payload you see within this is what you're sending to superbase nothing comes back so your your then in turn your api call is on the server side it's on the back end because it's being made from superbase so your client application does not see the payload or the secret and therefore it doesn't show up in the network tab all you see is, is what you send as part of your remote procedure call your payload so in this instance it's nothing however if we go to the read api so if you remember read api if we go back here again is this function don't need that anymore um, this is the function where we're getting the secret and passing it into our create image function but also the main thing is this is the function where we're getting our secret from this is remote procedure call we are using we're passing our prompt and our user id and your payload in that instance would be the user id which is your uuid which is an identifiable it's just a sort of random number or that's a random string should i say and then the prompt which is you know obviously just a, a description of an image so that's the only information in this instance in what you've seen the payload so it removes the risk of your api key being able to be intercepted because you're using the vault and you're calling the api call on the back end and not bringing it back to your client app to do like we're doing if we return it via getting the open eye key so it's to do with your attitude to risk i guess my personal preference is to do it on superbase it's a little bit more difficult to do i think because the flutterflow api setup is so easy it's brilliant actually it's very very good I, it's so easy to use and obviously having to do it all in postgres is a little bit more complicated but it's more secure so it, it's your attitude to risk returning your i would not store your keys in a variable that's i just wouldn't do that that just seems you know like a not a very clever thing to do getting them from the vault bringing them back into flutterflow is actually quite easy as well so um that's one way of doing it or you can obviously do everything on the back end like is my preference but say it's your attitude to risk they're the two ways that i'd go about doing it i'm sure there are others but that's sort of the, the two best ways i can think of so yeah hopefully that's um helps 
it's um it's obviously an important thing because whenever you build any kind of app these days you can use an api of some description pretty much so it's important you keep this stuff secure particularly something like open ai because it's something if, if it got open and abused you could start racking up bills somebody using your api keys without you knowing about it and all of a sudden you've got massive bills from from api call requests so you know when it's a, a paid service it's very important to keep them secure obviously so yeah hopefully that answers the questions and helps everybody out and i will speak to you in the next video